Hello and welcome back to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to look at organic chemistry, we're going to be looking at isomerism, and importantly we're going to look at the type of isomerism called structural isomerism. So by the end of today's session you should be able to do the two following things. Define the term structural isomer and draw the structure of chain, position and functional group isomers. So let's first look at some definitions. An isomer is described as a molecule or molecules with the same molecular formula but the atoms are arranged differently. In the A-level syllabus then we'll be looking at two different types of isomers, that of the structural isomers and also stereoisomers. As a point of note, the optical isomerism only comes in in year two. So this is actually an A-level course. And the geometric isomers in the stereoisomers we'll look at in another lesson. So for the time being, we are only going to be looking at structural isomers on the left-hand side of our diagram. So what is a structural isomer? Well, it's a molecule with the same molecular formula again, but they have a different structural formula. And the different structural formula can occur in one of three different ways. It can either have a different chain, it can have a different position of a functional group, or the functional groups can be different. We're going to go and have a look at those three different types of isomers now. Our first example then is going to be a chain isomer. And this is a structural isomer because we've got our example on the right here. They're the same molecular formula. Both of these are based on C4H10, if you count up the carbons and the hydrogens. This one on the left here is 1, 2, 3, 4, but tain. While this one on the right, the length of that carbon chain has changed. The longest carbon chain is now 3, so this is now propane. With a side group of a methyl. So this is methylpropane, and we've altered the chain length, or the skeleton, and so it's a chain isomer. Position isomers, then, these are not altering the carbon chain. Instead, they are moving a functional group. So our example here of a position isomer We've got the same molecular formula for both. They are C3H7OH. So they're both an alcohol group. They both got three carbons as their longest chain. So they're both based on propan. But the OH group is in a different position. In the first example, it's in position 1. And the second example, in position 2. So this one is propan 1L, and this one is propan 2L. They are position isomers. The final example, then, are functional group isomers. And we have a few examples. This one at the top, I'll label it A. Well, A, these are a skeletal diagram, but there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons, and here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons. Both of these have the same molecular formula of C6, H12, but the functional group in the one on the right is a double bond, and therefore this one on the right is an alkene. On the right, left-hand side of A here, we've got a six-membered ring, 
There are no carbon double bonds, so this is a cycloalkane. And in fact, it is cyclohexane, because there's six carbons in the chain. Whereas the one on the right here is hex, because of the six carbons, in, because of the carbon double bond, and it's one in, because that carbon carbon double bond occurs at position one. They have the same molecular formula, but the functional group is different. So functional group isomers. The next one then, B, that you might come across in the AS level. Well, again, we've got one, two, three carbons. One, two, three carbons. Both of these are the same molecular formula, C3. They both have six hydrogens. And one oxygen. This one on the left hand side, however, has got a carbon attached to a hydrogen and a double bond oxygen, so this is an aldehyde. So it is propanal. Whereas the one on the right has still got three carbons, so prop and but the carbon double bond oxygen where the functional group is. It's got a carbon either side, so this is propanone, and it's a keto. Again, same molecular formula, but this time different functional groups, so it's a functional group isomer. And the final one, C, well, this is more, you might come across in the second year of your A-level, because it's dealing with ester functional groups on the right-hand side, but we might come across this one on the left, which is a carboxylic acid. Is again one, two, three carbons in each of these. So it's C3, and then we've got six hydrogens and two oxygens for each one. This one on the list is propanoic acid. In the middle here, we have something called methyl ethanoate. So this is methyl. I'm not going to worry about the naming at the moment because this is a second year of your A-level course. Just so you can see them as functional group isomers. And this one here is called ethyl methanoate. Importantly, what I want you to be able to see here is that they have the same molecular formula, but these functional groups are slightly different, and so they are functional group isomers. The final thing to do then is just to have a look at some of these examples that I'm showing here, and just to be aware that sometimes, as a way of checking that we understand, examiners might uh, display molecules in such a way as to try and perhaps confuse us in terms of isomers. If we have a look at each of these examples in number one, well, some of them look like they could be either chain or perhaps position isomers. We have three carbons in the chain here and three carbons in the chain here. Three, three. So each of these has the molecular formula C3, H7, Br. And the first one, well, it's got three carbons in the chain, so it's propan. And in fact, there's only single bond, so it's propane. There's a bromine, so it's one bromo propane. In this second example, the bromo or the bromine seems to have moved position. In fact, it's still on the first carbon here, so this is still 1-bromopropane. So there's no difference between these two. As we move across here, I'll label these A, B, C and D to make it a bit more obvious. C, it looks as though the bromine is still on position 1, but it looks like our chain skeleton has differed in length, which would suggest this is a chain isomer. However, it doesn't matter 
if these are not in a straight line, they just go around the corner. This is still the longest carbon chain is three carbons in length. So this is still one bromopropane. And the same is true for D, that this is again one bromopropane. So just be aware of how they draw the molecules. Number two here then, let's just look at that one final example. We'll label these A and B. Both of these, again, trying to draw them differently, but still we have the same molecular formula, C3H7Br. This time we have the bromine just on the second carbon, and we've got three carbons in the chain, so it's prop. They're all single covalent bonds, so ain two bromo propane. That means that one and two, if I was to compare these, are position isomers. of each other, but A, B, C and D are all the same molecule and A and B in part 2 are the same molecule so they are not isomers of each other. Just to recap then, you should now be able to define the term structural isomer and draw the structure of chain, position and functional group isomers. Till next time, bye bye.